<clears throat> so, hey. so, hi. How's it going? Good. Um, let me just. Okay, there. Now, obviously, I've been here for a while, having my hand raised up and all that shit. I'm a person who's been raised on a farm since I was, like, a fetus, practically. And all of our meat, we raise cows and our neighbors raise chickens. We have a few, but we don't usually take their eggs, so we have a lot of chickens roaming about. So, when we kill any cows, they're usually sick or old and all that crap. Okay, are we done? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, so what came into my mind was, like, would you do that to your grandma? Um, well, thing is, no, I wouldn't because, one, that's yeah, not Two, I'm related to that human being who has helped raise me for so many years. Sure, but I mean, like, I don't know. Do you think just because someone gets old, it's okay to, like, I'm sorry. No, um, I mean, like, if they're old and on the verge of death. Like, um, like uh, maybe, like, um, a, a com like you know, uh, euthanasia, maybe, kind of thing, like, if they're yeah. yeah well i mean well what about wait hold on wait 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 are, you're pulling my leg here uh on the verge of death so like are you talking about like a truck ran over them and they're they're losing blood or something like that or are you talking about like they're just they're just going to die of natural causes like you know any day now so it's okay to kill them and it's, eat them it's... Either they get hurt to the point where we can't do anything about it, like they break their legs so severely they can't even walk and then they're in constant pain, or with the on the verge of death part with being old and stuff, it's like if you can see their ribs and they're having trouble walking around, they don't have very good hearing, they don't have generally good health. Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean... I would, I think maybe you and I would kind of draw a line at slightly different areas. I would, I would lose everything I have to, to be able to just prevent like an animal who I cared about from suffering or to be with them or to ensure their comfort um, as much as I could. But like, you know, that's just maybe where I would go. And of course there'd be stipulations, which I'd have to concede. I wouldn't like really lose everything to do that. But um, as far as like, you know, an animal who's healthy, right, who doesn't need to be like um, put down, right? Who's just like getting old. Um, you know, they may not have the same energy and zip as they once did, but do you think that like, you know, an elderly dog, um, let's say like a family just raised a dog and the kids went off to college and they're kind of just like, quote unquote, stuck with this dog is how they feel, right? But like, um, maybe they didn't, cause maybe they didn't care for the dog that much or something, right? But like, do you think that, dog's life matters within the context of like you know what they value within what the context of what's important to the dog i mean yeah of course because of how all that like plays out like i have a dog who's upstairs he's old he's blind he's half deaf and we still love him, love him, still right? have him. You, you still love him right yeah like He's my first dog. I've never had a better companion in my life. Yeah, it's awesome. What's his name, if you don't mind sharing? His name is Winnie. He came with that name because of how he looks. Winnie, like Winnie the Pooh? Yeah, like, kind of like that. Oh, cool. Yeah, I mean, see, that's the thing. Like, we don't just, somebody doesn't just become disposable when they're no longer, like, benefiting us or if, if they're not, like... You know, basically, yeah, if, if they're not, like, benefiting us or if, if they're not, like, uh, you know, the, you can't just throw some, you can't just throw away a friend um, unless they've, you know, given you reason to, right? Unless, yeah. like, unless yeah. they've betrayed you or, like, you know, something like that, done something to break your trust or something. Yeah, you can't do that. No. Like. Yeah, I mean, I want to extend that to 
non-human animals now um, in this conversation, if I could. So um, would we have any reason, like let's say that um, a cow had been rescued from a, or from a slaughterhouse and was in sanctuary, would that cow then be, you know, would it be fair game just to turn them into a burger? Um, just like if they're getting old and maybe they're kind of slow and maybe they kind of like are, you know, struggling to bend down and drink their water because their their spine has ossified a little bit or something like that. But like they can still get around and their tail still wags. They still like to wake up in the morning and trot around with the pigs and the chickens. Like, do you think that their life should be ended just because they're old? No, because that cow still has multiple things it could be doing. I'm, I mean, like animals that are in constant pain, like. For example, we had a cow who could barely walk. It, like, she struggled to even move in the slightest. Like, even turning her head hurt her. I mean, yeah, and in, in, in instances where an animal is, you know, so severely debilitated or in such a severe, like, end stage of a disease where, like, let's say their, you know, their bowels are completely obstructed because of um, tumors and like you know their lungs are getting filled with like fluids etc in that case yeah one could make an argument that it's probably you know going to prevent a lot of suffering by um, putting that animal down right but yeah. Yeah. Uh, in the cases of like you know meat eggs and dairy for example right like um, the factory farming within the US and even the non factory farms just even the, in the small town farms the purpose of these animals that's been given to them right like, you know, I almost hesitate to preclude that sentence in that way because it's almost like I don't want to activate schemas within your brain about what the purpose of these animals is, right? Like, you realize how yeah. careful you have to navigate these waters of trying to get past people's defenses, which have been just built up around you like a shield and snapped really tight around your eyes and your ears so that things that you see, things that you hear are not necessarily applied with equal standards across the barrier lines of species. I mean, yeah, like, I've personally thought about going vegan a couple of times because of how my family life is, like, both of my moms were vegan for, like, a year, and then they split up, and I'm now with my new parent, and she kind of, my birth mom sort of stopped being vegan she was like i'm gonna go vegetarian and, I'm, and then i'm not gonna change anymore and like do you think that i guess like if somebody else ha i mean i guess like are, are you saying that they they have power over your over your food choices basically so they would they would be determining what you what you eat yeah essentially because um the older members of my family usually dictate on what animals die. Like my uncle, he dictates over the cows and he only kills them, obviously, with permission from everyone. Whenever they're like to the point that I described earlier. So whenever my other two moms were still married or whatever, they... How do you say it? Um, I only ate... I didn't eat meat for, like, half the year because of that and how that all played out. Yeah, and, like, you know, again, just bringing you back to kind of the realities, like, you know, um, beside from, you know, the conversations about animals who are aging, um, the reality on these farms is that these animals aren't old when they're killed, right? Um, they're either, you know, in, in the case of like the cows that are raised for their flesh, like the Angus cow kind of breeds that are kind of like the, the stocky muscular, uh, usually they're like brown or kind of like um, light with like dark markings. Those cows um, tend to be killed, I think like in like, I don't know, they probably reach full maturity, I would say in like eight months. I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that, um, but but yeah, they're, they're obviously not kept around longer than is necessary, right? So. Um, yeah. that's, that's, you know, the proverbial, uh, thinning the, thinning the herd comes from there. Um, besides that, if you look at the dairy industry, the cows who are exploited for milk, you know, um, they get killed around like five or six years of age when they collapse, when they're, 
uh, milk production is no longer sufficient to be deemed profitable by the farmer. I mean, yeah, because whenever, you know, family, whatever, deals with my mom's, I had to watch several documentaries over this, and we went over that. Uh, we watched, like, No Impact Man, Blackfish, all of that. But So it sounds like, um, if I could say, she uh, was really into, like, the actual kind of, like, animal ethics. Like, um, considering you mentioned Blackfish, like, that's about SeaWorld, right? Yeah, like how that's all fucked up and, you know, you know. Yeah, so, I mean, um, what objection would you have to adopting, like, that mentality, that, you know, a vegan mentality and looking at, you know, not just use of animals as food, you know, killing them, uh, commodifying them, exploiting them, but also looking at animals and entertainment, food, or, sorry, like, uh, experiments and, and uh, clothing as well? I personally think that's kind of fucked up. Because um, my entire family doesn't support, like, aquarium zoos and all that because, it's unless, unless, you know, the animal actually can't be out there. So, like, sanctuaries and all that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sanctuaries are great. And um, just for anyone listening, I'd recommend looking up sanctuaries in your area, like farm sanctuaries. And, you know, find one that's run by, like, reputable people. Sometimes... Uh, well, yeah, just make sure it's run by reputable people. I'll just leave it at that. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really the contrast between seeing an animal on a sanctuary and seeing an animal on a truck, you know, parked behind a slaughterhouse waiting for the workers to arrive in the morning um, is, is just stark. Like, the difference in, in their faces, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's not great. It's not at all. All right, well, um, if you don't have any other questions, I'd like to go ahead and let some other people on stage. Wait, I just, I just wanted to... Wait, um, I, wait but before you go... I you quit. Wait, no, no, wait. All right, wait, one second. Just, just to make this clear. Yeah, because, like, so it is the case that they're not dying old on, these, on this farm, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, because, like, I, I thought that you said that, like, these cows are, like, dying of old age, which is just, like, not the case. Oh, we just, well, we just close have, like, to the age. How, like, various generations. We have, like, a bunch that have been here a lot longer, and then a bunch who have been here for, like, what? Like, three months. Okay, how, how, how long is, like, one of the older cows? How old? Uh, have like, to ask my uncle that one, because I don't even know. Yeah, okay, because... Yeah, because it's just the case that, like, there's, um, you know, especially if you're making money on this, there's no really, like, a monetary incentive to keep uh, cows around when they're not, like, producing a lot of milk anymore. Because then you're spending money on their food, etc. Which is why, like, these cows, they actually die at a fraction of their lifespan, e including dairy cows. So dairy cows and, and cows that are reared for for beef, for the animal, uh, for their flesh, and you know also, also the, the the dairy cows later get slaughtered for their meat once they their milk production declines. So they're actually like dying at a fraction of their lifespan. Yeah, we don't we don't let that happen. We'll like we don't care. We'll just make sure that they survive as long as they can, even if it costs like however much. Is that true, though? I mean, that, that, that'd that be, like, the first time I ever hear that. It actually is. Like, we have so many cows that don't produce milk that we could just turn it into meat, and yet we haven't because they're perfectly fine, they're perfectly healthy, they can go on doing whatever. Okay, wait. Um, before we move on, I, I wanted to ask a few questions. Um, and the first question would be, how do these cows get fed? How did they get fed? Well, most of that no, is no, no. handled no, by no, my grandma, who usually has them grass-fed 
we don't like to use like really bad feed obviously yeah no my, my question was how do they get pregnant not how do they breed hmm that that i don't know okay so probably check it out because if you and do you know how many cows a cow gives birth to in a year or like how often does a cow give birth or how many cows do you have in particular I don't know about the birth question but i know how many we have currently we have about maybe a little over 20 okay and uh, when was the last time it was 19 or 18 So I'm I'm guessing that you know I mean usually the thing is cows are usually artificially inseminated to get pregnant right so that's because we cannot naturally wait for the cows to breed and get pregnant because then the demand will never be met right so yeah if the humans have to intervene and and you know artificially inseminate the cows by you know um by by using an electric stimulator to to you know extract the semen from the male cow and then inserting the hand all the human hand all the way up until the shoulder um to hold the cervix in place and then inject the sperm right so that is artificial insemination uh, which is definitely we, yeah we don't right. do that uh at, at all yeah, okay so what do you do if if that's not the case and how do these cows breed they just you know breed naturally we don't force them to breed we just So you're telling me you don't force them to breed and they they make babies on their own will and um, Yeah, cuz like as I said, we don't force them to do anything that they don't want to unless they have to go inside obviously like if there's like a storm or something like that. Okay, and uh, how many do you know how many male cows or female cows you have? We have mainly female cows. For males, we have about maybe 3 or 4. Okay, is there a reason you do not have a lot of male cows? Um, no, not really, cuz most of our cows just come from like other farms around the area. Okay, so because all all the male cows are from the slaughter, right? For for veal yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And also do your cows, I mean, do you separate the female cows and the male, uh, sorry, the female calves because obviously if the if the milk is need, if if you need milk to sell to humans and actually be profitable from this business um you cannot really be that ethical right you cannot necessarily let the cow breed on their own and then let the cow let the calf drink all the milk and then you know let the cow live a happy life up until old age or you know up until health concerns start popping up right we can't necessarily let yeah, that yeah we we absolutely don't take all the milk from the cow that needs it like if we per day we probably get like maybe two buckets of milk at most okay so you're telling me that you know you don't know i mean you're telling me that the cows breed naturally and you give the calves and you give the calves enough milk you want to separate the mother and calf and then after the yeah. milk plus declines as well um you know you let the cow roam around freely for about a few years up until they they you know but not obviously not 20 years right because the cow the cow's natural life span is 20, 18 25 years but no you let them roam around freely up until they hit some sort of health emergency following which it's better to put them down than to keep them alive then you do all of this and you still get a profit from this business well our profits don't really We're more profitable on chickens and the like such as we also do have horses but we only have two of which that belong to my cousin. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think yeah, we um, we do want to move on to other people though because we have like yeah. 30 people with their hands yeah, raised. Yeah, yeah, sorry sorry about that. Yeah. Just want to mention you know this it's impossible for um um humans to extract milk from a cow without exploiting the cow because one thing to meet the demand the cow has to be artificially inseminated or it um rather forcefully be pregnant to to be pregnant let's grant that you know the, the let's grant that your cows are not being artificially inseminated but then for the cow for the calf to 
drink all the milk and then the cleaning sector remaining milk well then the, the cows are going to have to be selectively bred they're going to be have to be injected with hormones to produce more milk than the calf requires that is still exploitation right and then granted that you know let's say you're keeping the cow longer than what the uh, the what the the milk i mean after the cow starts the milk production starts declining you still keep the cow around well i mean still still slaughtering an animal who doesn't want to die is still unethical so i i i don't necessarily think whatever you're saying is true because there's hardly a profit from being um that this one is so ethical there's, there's no profit at all so i guess there have to be corners cut and efficiencies decrease uh, if we to increase the efficiency the ethicality has to decrease right so that's what i would say um but yeah please uh yeah jordan i i'll hand it over to you bye bye okay Cool. Yeah, thanks for coming up. It was nice talking yeah, to you. Yeah, thanks for your time. Okay, bye. Cool. Yep, just as up to everyone um, in the room, we are prioritizing members who are present on the server. So if you join the server and grab a role, or reacting to the welcome rules, um, we'll get you ahead of people who aren't in the server. Um, cool, cool. Hey, how's it going? Hello, hello. 